All right, so uh, let's look at using package net HTTP uh, because it's going to make our life easier. Um, so we can use package net HTTP to create an HTTP server, but remember it's still on top of TCP. And, uh, and that's what this kind of looks like. So we have function main, and uh, I declare a value of type my handler, and my handler is an int. Hmm, that's interesting. I called it my handler. So I created a user defined type here. So this is something you could do in Go. You could just like say, you know, hey, I'm making my own type, and this is my type. It's a type, right? And the underlying type of my handler is int. Okay, so the underlying base type of my handler is int. But my handler is its own type. So I create, and that could be anything. This is just random. And the reason I, I created this was just so that I could attach a method to it. And so with this receiver right here, I'm attaching the serve HTTP method to this type. And so now I could do HTTP listen and serve 9000 right here, and I pass in what port I want to listen on. And then I give it, I give it that value, which I created, that variable which I created, which has a method attached to it, right? And the method is serve HTTP. And so listen and serve will then use serve HTTP to serve, right? So this takes the port it's going to listen on, and then it takes a handler, right? And this is a handler, and this is the handler interface. And the handler interface means that you need to implement, right, the serve HTTP function. So since this value, right, this variable implements the serve HTTP method, uh, it's a handler, and it knows how to, to, to deal with requests, and write responses. So it has access to all of that. So that's the key is this, this handler uh, interface. And the handler interface means you got to have this method. And when you have this method, you could then use anything as a handler. I'm using an int as a handler, right? And so I just created my own type so I could attach this method to it. And now that this method's attached to it, it's implementing the handler interface. And now this will be able to handle, uh, you know, uh, requests and, and write responses through the web. And so we just use HTTP listen and serve, pass that in, and this. And so uh, serve is receive requests and send back responses. It's that simple. Like that's like one of the key takeaways. So then I just use something that can write, you know, to a writer, the writer interface. And I write and I write hello world. And I'll print out hello world when I go to listen and serve 9000. I don't know if I have a picture of that. I do. I'm pretty thorough when I put these things together. Maybe too thorough. Uh -huh. I like having a clearly defined path. I'm not awesome enough yet just to live code it. <laughs> It'll crash in front of you and they'll be like, ah, oh, crap, I need that 20 minutes to figure it out at home alone with no pressure. <laughs> there we go, localhost 9000, hello world. And, uh, and then if I curl that, right, I could see my status line. So there's uh, that, and then my status code and status phrase, and that's the HTTP protocol version, and then my headers. Is this for the response or the request? What's that? What is this? Response. Yeah. Hey, response. I found it. It's 200. Okay. Right. So we can look at the status line to see if it's a response or request. And the content type is telling us, hey, I'm sending back text plain. So it's just going to print out plain text HTML. Whoa, Jenny has a question. Uh, we'll I'll talk after class. <laughs> What's up? I'm kidding. Oh, I was just going to ask. So previously we had to do like the status line and everything manually. Now yeah. we're using the net package. Done for you, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So taking a lot of that hard stuff out. That doesn't mean sometimes we might not override it or add it in. And that I give that answer with like 87% certainty. <laughs> Daniel, you got anything to add? No, these, uh, you might want to. Can you pull that down? You can't see up there very well. Oh, yeah. Director. <laughs> there we go. So uh, you may, we may end up, uh, the 200 is default. Um, just about anything will have a 200 response. Um, the date will automatically be put in there, too. Content length, the response writer will automatically be able to figure out for you. Then content type, it will automatically choose the, the UTF-8 character set, which is what Go is written in, so it's the easiest one for it to do, deal with. Um, but the content type text plane, it'll actually figure that out with pretty good accuracy. 
if it reads the first line and it's the doc type HTML, it'll automatically change it to text HTML. Or if it's an image or something, it'll appropriately have the image slash PNG, image slash JPEG or whatever it may be. That was awesome. So that stuff right there pretty much just explains what I said to you, but I put it in there so that uh, uh, you can read it later or just to get it clear in my own head. The very, and this is like, you know, getting the precision for the terminology used is another one of the things like that, uh, I don't know, I've, I've, I've worked towards with Go because, am I creating an object? <laughs> is this a, you know, so the variable H is of the type my handler, right? Whoops. Sorry. Uh, my handler is a user defined type. The underlying type of my handler is an int. So, underlying type is the way you'd talk about that, right? In Go. My handler has a method called serve HTTP. Because my handler has a serve HTTP method, my handler implements the handler interface. On line 17, HTTP listen and serve takes two arguments the port on which it listens and a handler. And then I grade this out here because this is like nice to know but not need to know yet. If the second argument to listen and serve is nil, then the default serve mux is used. Objects implementing the handler interface can be registered to serve a particular path or subtree in the HTTP server. Objects implementing the handler interface can be registered to serve a particular path or subtree in the HTTP server. So when we use default serve mux, right, we'll see how we could have different objects that implement the handler interface, and they can be registered to serve a particular path or subtree. So we'll see that in a minute. Handle registers the handler for a given pattern, for the given pattern. So that's, like I said, uh, a preview of what's coming. All right, so uh, what's this code doing? So again, we have, right, uh, my handler, so creating a handler, and the listen and serve, and the, hand, you know, this, this uh, what's the correct phrase to use on that? This value, this object, what did I call it before? My handler's an int, my handler's a user defined type, my handler is a method, my, my handler implements a variable, variable h is of type. All right. So, uh, anyhow, here's my handler, implements a method, listen and serve, right? And then here, write string, so it takes a writer, uh, writer interface, and then re request dot request URI. So this request has this uh, available to it, and it'll give us whatever I put in in the URL here, past the host, is what prints out. So that's what that does. Kind of interesting. And so there's in the, the godoc.org net HTTP package, you can look at request, which is this part right here. And uh, part of uh, request is request URI, and that returns a string, and it tells you, you know, basically that it does this, right, gives you that. Look at the fields and methods of type request. Okay, if you say so. Type request. Ooh, hey, method. So I could do rec method, right? Just like I did the rec. Just like I did. Down with that one rec request URI, right? Because rec is my rec request URI because rec is my pointer to an HTTP request. So when I go look at my HTTP request, where did I go? Right there. Got way too much stuff open. Here's request URI way down at the bottom. Right there, right? So I was able to do rec request URI. But I could do all this other stuff, right? So my method, my URL, right? Uh, the header, body, content length. So there's a lot of stuff I can access in there. So again, already a lot easier. Because before we were having to like do that thing with the strings and break the strings up into its different parts. And then, like, okay, give me the first word. Now we just say, you know, give me my method, rec.method.
So here we have listen and serve, port, handler, right? And handler's implementing uh, the handler interface. And uh, switch, request, URL, path. Huh, interesting, right? So I'm going to switch on the request URL path, which will be this part right here. And if it's forward slash cat, I'm going to write kitty, kitty, kitty. And if it's forward slash dog, I'm going to write doggy, doggy, doggy. Doggy, doggy, doggy. You come up with something better at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> I actually think it's pretty good. So. The, path, the part of the, path, the URL path is from the first forward slash to either the question mark or the pound sign. Important, return to full screen. Important, Google Drive is now full screen. Important thing to keep in mind, there is no correspondence to the URL and anything on the computer. Not a file, not a path. It's whatever you want it to mean. The definition of the, the meaning of cat, forward slash cat or forward slash dog is in the code. There is no cat PHP, there is no dog ASP file on my computer. Routing is completely defined by me. So it's up to you to define the meaning of your URLs, right? This URL means this, and then when somebody goes to that URL, I have this code which does this thing. So now we went from just uh, before I was just writing, you know, kitty doggy, right? That's what I wrote before. Now I'm putting a little HTML in there, and I set the content type, response, header, set, content type, text HTML, car set UTF-8, right? And now I print out this stuff and doggy doggy. You might play with going in there and not having that. I don't know if I did that example. Oh, we get to see a cute puppy soon. You might play with doing that and taking this out and seeing if it still comes out as HTML, right? If, if Go figures it out and adds it or if the browser figures it out when it sees this. Be interesting to play with. Everybody got this? Anybody need another moment on it? Y'all want to get to the dog, I know. And so now I'm adding in some more HTML. And these back ticks give me a raw string literal, which means what? I think you explained this the other day. It means, first of all, it doesn't change it if there's spaces in it, but it's uh, literal because it's just a value, and it's raw because why? Why do they call it raw string literal? It's the, I think it has to do with the. Uh... It's reading like the new line character directly as part of the string as opposed to requiring it to be uh, escaped. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. I know I read something about that, and then it left my head. All right, so here we're uh, putting in more HTML, and we're doing an image source. So now I'm having just when they put in cat or dog, right, I'm serving an image. Yeah. Ooh. Here's my dog. It's not my dog, actually. It's a dog on the Internet. Great thing about the internet is nobody knows if you're a dog. You seen that comic? All right, so uh, I don't know why I just gave you all this. Response writer, net HTTP, and then header, header, header. Because I wanted to show you how we set that header. Response, header, set, right? And so here we have response writer, and response writer. Uh, response writer is this part right here, HTTP response writer. And there's my RES, and then RES is right there. So there's my response writer. And response writer has a header method, right? And so uh, that will give me a type of header. So this one right here gives me a type of header. And so a header is a map with a key of string and values a slice of string. And uh, type header, here's another way to look at it has all these methods associated with it. So when I have a header, I could use the set method. So, recap. Response writer, right? That's right there. My variable for it's RES. And then it has a header method, which will give me a type header. And when I get type header, I have all these methods. And I'm going to use the set method. And the set method takes a key and a value. And, you know, basically I am setting a header key value. How many people that's helpful for you? Just sort of see how you read that in the docs? Sweet. Dude, because the docs are hard. Is it hard for you? If it's hard for you to read the docs, raise your hand. 
like to just sort of like do that little walk through like how do I go from having a response writer which gives me a type header once I have a type header I have all these methods associated with it and okay I can use the set method and this and then that's going to translate into me writing that right I find it depends on which package you're looking at yeah. some of the default packages definitely get a little complicated in the net and HTT packages yeah get yeah especially if you're looking for a common word and yeah it's like okay which one are you yeah and then some of them will have like the same thing in two places, but they're, you know, one's associated with a uh, type, and one's not. One's the top level. I don't know. All right, good. I'm glad that helped. Okay, so go doc.org.net, HTTP response writer. Notice the response writer is an interface, whereas type request was a struct. <laughs> ah, what? Let's go see if I can figure that one out. Response writer was an interface. So response writer is an interface. Oh, cool, right? Response writer is an interface. It's got to have these methods, okay? So there are the methods for response writer. Oh, that's cool. Response writer is an interface, and uh, request was a struct. Okay, is request a struct? Well, let's go look for request and request and uh, oh, I thought it was at the top. I'm not at the top. Request. So here's response. Response, response writer. writer, right there. There's response writer. And then request, HTTP request, right? Net HTTP. And so again, just before I like, you know, we're talking about this right here. Response writer, that's an interface. And then HTTP, HTTP, HTTP is the package. And then this is the type. Here's the package, here's the type. So this one's an interface. And this one here is a struct. Struct. Well, okay, that's kind of interesting, you know. Like, just like, what was the design design decision to say? Okay, this is gonna be a struct, and it's gonna have all these fields, right? And then the other one probably had to do with testing. They can make an entire request, either whether from getting it off of the URL, off of a web browser, or it's generating the code. But then the response writer either has to be hooked up to the socket or since it's just an interface, they can write one that's just there for testing so they can make sure the response is back is correct when they were testing the package. Yeah. That would be my guess. And it's also interesting to think about this is a writer, right? Like I'm doing something. When you talk about doing something, what does stuff but methods, right? Okay, writer, I'm doing something and you know I'm gonna write, you know, that's one of the things I'm gonna do, or write the header. And, uh, and then request is going to be giving me a lot of data, right? Like, oh, here's the request, and here's all the pieces of data that come with that request, right? So it's just kind of interesting. Remember, it's this simple, servers receive requests and send back responses. And so that's what, you know, that's doing. Receiving a request and sending back a response. So say it with me, what, what data type is this? It's a struct, and this one is a interface. interface. And why might this be an interface? Because it's doing stuff, right? Interfaces are about defining a set of methods, and methods are about, hey, these are the things I do. And why might this one be a struct? I'm getting a bunch of pieces of data when the request, so let me, let me collect all those fields of data into one structure, the struct. That also has something to do with the fact that that request can come from a lot of different sources, so it's easier to check the different structs. Yeah, maybe. Because it might be written in one of the many languages. Isn't it filled up by the server? Yeah, it's filled up by the net HTTP package um, from wherever it got it from. Yeah. <coughs> Well, this is also useful, I guess, not only for testing from them, but also for you if you want to test your own uh, your own uh, handler methods. You can write, you can create a, a request by yourself. It's just a plain struct. You scrap all, figure out what needs to go into the different fields. You can do so, and you just have to make your own response writer that that goes back into your testing code to make sure the response is correct. This is showing you that. Uh, you know, 
for something to be a handler, it has to implement the handler interface, which means it has to have this method. So my, var my variable h, which is of type my handler, is implementing that, so it makes my variable h a handler, right, which knows how to handle requests and responses. Package net HTTP. So uh, just taking a look at all this stuff. Anybody have any questions? Because I feel like we're just transitioning into a new chunk of material. You getting it? Cool. So uh, package HTTP provides HTTP client and server implementations. And then there's some really cool examples. Whoa. I don't know why I'm jerky with the code today. Sorry about that. And then there's some really cool examples. HTTP git. That's cool. And it'll just get it for me and put it in response. I got to play with that. Like, just go get a web page and stick it in the response and then, like, look at it. Because then I could, like, give it a list of URLs and go get it and I could parse through it and I've got a web scraper. Whoa. Right? Now I'm, like, gathering data on my competitor from my competitor's website. With HTTP get is that it? That's HTTP post, <laughs> upload, image, JPEG. Sweet. I could start randomly posting to forms all over the internet. I could use this to get. I could look through it to see if there's a post, add that to a slice of URLs I want to post to, and then just start posting all kinds of crap. I'm gonna get banned fast. <laughs> Those captures will catch you. Yeah, captures. And then here we have uh, HTTP post form, URL value. So I could just p pass in the values for a form I want to post to. There's a contest. You want to win badly enough? That's a for loop waiting to happen. <laughs> 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 just a timer, right? And just figure out what's the sweet spot and submit every one minute. <laughs> Let that thing run for days. Put together a, 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 a map of all your friends. <laughs> Their information or whatever. What would be the right What would be the right data structure to store like all of your friends' info, like their first name, their last name, their email, and then keep track of all those friends so that you could then submit it to a form over and over and over. Would you use a map? Would you use a struct? Or would you use a slice? Yeah, struct. I think right. So I said map, but and then once you get all your friends' structs right in this, you know, populate the struct, you could keep them all in a slice or a map. The slice, I think, too. All right, so HP get, and then we get the response, and then defer. We got to close that, I guess, and then read it. Whoa. So, like, I feel like there's a ton of potential here that I'm getting a lot closer to accessing, and I'm looking forward to actually being able to use this language like I know how to use Excel. Because, like, somebody gives me an Excel thing, and it's like, no problem, bam, done because I've spent so much time with it, right? But I'm looking forward to being able to do that kind of stuff with this language and be like, yeah, totally. I'm going to like recreate Larry Page's page rank algorithm just because I think it'd be interesting. Which is just a web crawler scraper, same thing. And then if you look at like all the different, you know, uh, things that are available to you here in NetHttp, you got constants, you got variables, you have func air, right? You have handle, handle func, listen and serve, listen and serve TLS. TLS stands for transport layer security, though most people still refer to it as SSL, secure sockets layer, right? Uh, but TS, TLS is the new, basically, HTTPS. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what TSL is. It sounds like it should be a car, the Tesla TL, TLS. <laughs> Nobody will know who you are. It's going to be fully encrypted. Funk not found, funk redirect, serve file, set cookie, status text. So I'm just like giving you a little bit of a forced tour of reading the docs and like, oh, look at some of the stuff that's available. These are just the things that stood out to me when I read through them. Client, I could create a client, right? And the client could then make requests. I could create a lot of clients. I could create go routines with multiple clients at the same time making requests. Uh, cookie, handler, handler, funk. So we saw handler. We're going to see more of handler, funk. Header, request, right? And all the methods associated with request. So we looked at request already a little bit. And request is a struct or an interface? Struct. struct. And then we have response, 
and response is a structor interface. Ooh, we didn't talk about it. We talked about response writer, which is down below. And I didn't put an arrow next to it. That totally needs an arrow. And we have serve mux and server. So we're going to look at serve mux. It kind of makes me think of a dog, too. I don't know why. That'd be a good name for a dog. Hey, mux. It's my dog multiplexer. And then there's a bunch of examples here. File server, file server. I feel like this lecture has gotten better as it's gone on. Get hijacker response writer. So we got examples we can look at. Hijacker, I think I need to go look at that example. I'm interested in an example called hijacker. The same thing. <laughs> really? They gave me an example called hijacker? I got to check that out. I haven't checked it out because that's life with kids. Like, it's nuts, dude. Like, my life has fully been hijacked. <laughs> got two kids, and like, it's like the greatest spiritual path ever. You want to become enlightened? Don't go to a monastery and meditate. Have children, right? And be a good parent. Because you can have children, be a bad parent, and not have any spiritual work done at all. But to be a good parent, you got to give yourself up. You got to just like be like, okay. And sometimes it's, it's, it's challenging. But it's also awesome. It's also awesome. And then we have all these constants, right? So here are my constants, all these status things. There's bad request, not found. Sweet. So I could just use that constant, right? Or I could type in 400, 404. <laughs> I think I'll type in 404. <laughs> right? But there, there are the words. And then we have variables that are a part of NetHTTP. And so, like, you know, these gives me, give me different a pointer to a protocol error and then that stuff. What does that mean? I wonder if I have another slide. I do. I'm awesome. Protocol error, right? So here's protocol error, error string. Protocol error, error string. And then here's error, type error interface, and it's just a method error that returns a string. So type error interface has a method that returns a string. And so here is a protocol error. And protocol is a struct, protocol error is a struct, and a pointer, the receiver, a reference pointer, I'm just trying to find the right word to say that. But anyhow, protocol error has a method error that returns a string. Sweet. So that implements type error. Okay, why is that going away? That implements, stay. That implements, maybe I need a new battery or something. That implements type error. I'm going to blame it on the battery. That implements type error. And that leads to nowhere. Over here, we just have protocol errors. But I guess we could use that where errors are used. And then we have uh, errors new. So we get a new error. So some variables we could use. If you have anything to say about this stuff, jump in. You know, errors new just creates a new generic error. doesn't matter what the actual struct and type is. This all made sense to me when I was putting it together, but I forget my main point. <laughs> So let's jump past that. Uh, here's error, error is new, and then it prints the error. Yeah, I got more to learn about errors too. And then look at this, we have more variables of net HTTP, and we have this variable here, whoops, see, jumpy. We have this variable here, default serve mux. And all that does, all that does is give me a new serve mux. So we're gonna see default serve mux being used as a variable, and all you got to do is remember is, hey, that just runs this function, new serve mux, and, it, and it'll give me a, a new serve mux. Function is used run once at the beginning, and that's got the result of that. It's not running it every time you call default serve mux. So understanding our example, I'm not even sure what our example was. <laughs> There's our example. We understand that. There's listen and serve, right? So you can read about listen and serve. It takes a string and a handler. And then this is what a handler is. So the handler goes in there into listen and serve, something that's implementing the handler interface. And so we created here this, and it, and it has this method, which makes it a handler, right? Since it implements this method, makes it a handler. And then we could use that in listen and serve. So just kind of showing how listen and serve here takes an address, which is a string, and a handler takes an address, which is a string and a handler, and this is a handler, right? We've been over that a million times. And then we have response writer, right? And uh, response writer has this, right? Which is the writer interface from package IO. Okay? And that's the end, apparently. 
So that's just uh, understanding our example. So next week, or Thursday, today's Tuesday. Thursday, we're going to look at routing and RESTful. And I'm just going to give you a preview of that because I think that's totally cool and exciting. And you should probably go jump in on that and, and just start playing with it. It's so awesome. I'm just looking for an example. OK, here. Yeah, that's it. So I create a new serve mux. Mux stands for multiplexer. Multiplexer in engineering means it just, you know, switching paths, right? Like send it this way or that way, depending upon what it is. That's my understanding, and that's the depth of my understanding of multiplexer. But here I create a new serve mux or multiplexer, a serve multiplexer. It is a handler, right? So I could pass that in to listen and serve, which means mux, certain new serve mux, right? If I look at what it does, it's going to return something which is a handler, right? And then I could I could use this method off of my, so let's see what new serve mux does. I gotta answer that question before you guys go. New serve mux. Type serve mux. New serve mux returns a pointer. Uh, serve mux. Wow, this is annoying. Returns a pointer to a serve mux. And a serve mux, right, is a struct. And it's a request multiplexer. But then we have a whole bunch of uh, methods that we could use off our serve mux. And one is handle. So we can say, hey, anything at this path, use this, right? And uh, so we're going to use that handler. So a handle takes a handler. And we'll see how handle func takes a handler func. We'll see that next Thursday, this coming Thursday. So now you can start using this to create paths. How many people learned something good today? Cool. How many people like, oh, I'm enjoying what I'm getting out of this class? All right. How many people, if you have any feedback or anything about how the class can be run better, hang out afterwards and, and uh, share with me. It's a collaborative team environment, though we only have so much time. I'm pretty much sitting up here, Daniel and I, and just downloading information. But if you have any ideas, let me know to make it better for you. You want more homework? Fine. Done. I'll give you more homework. Whatever it takes to help you learn. You want more tests? You want a midterm? Fine, done. You'll have midterms. You'll have finals. I think this class is kind of cool. Like, uh, I like it. Um, but it's different, right? Indifference good. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do more stuff on Thursday.